What's up guys, this is Sam Burham with Southern Tier Outdoors. A little background on myself before we start. Um, I used to be a full-time taxidermist and now I just practice part-time. With that being said, one of the main questions that I always get asked is how I go about getting my skulls so clean and so white every single time. So in this video I'm going to show you guys step by step and product by product how I turn your dead heads into beautiful works of art that you can cherish and display for years to come. So stay tuned. Alright guys, before we get started, I want to go over a couple of the tools and the products that we're going to be using. Um, first and foremost, we're going to go with what I use in the water for the boiling process. Basically, you just want to get some type of degreasing product. Dawn dish soap. Very cheap. Very easy to find. And I like to use just straight OxyClean. Again, a really good degreaser. Keeps the pots clean. Keeps them smelling fresh. Okay, um, as far as tools goes, you're going to need a skinning tool. Me, I personally just like to use a regular old scalpel. Um, I do not use a pressure washer. I, scra I hand scrape all the meat off of every skull that I do. And to do that, a, par a paring knife. Again, really simple. Um, as far as getting all the cartilage out of the nasal passage, and the brain, I use a hook grabbing tool. And a good wire brush goes a long way as well. Um, there'll be a little bit of meat still stuck on the skull. On some parts, again, a wire brush goes a long way to scrape some of that off. Um, gloves, depending on what kind of skull you're, you're dealing with and the condition that it's in, definitely get some gloves. A lot of the times when you um, do skulls, the nasal bones will fall off during the boiling process. So always keep super glue handy. As far as whitening, I go to one of our local uh, salon stores and I get 40% by volume liquid developer. This is uh, by Salon Care. Um, I think a gallon of this is probably, it'll probably run you about 20 bucks. And then I mix this product in with it. It's uh, Quick Blue by L'Oreal. Um, a scoop or two of this mixed in with your developer. It, it just makes everything super white and super clean. All right, guys, those are the products that I use. So we're going to shoot down and we're going to start skinning out this deer that I have and show you how all this works. All right, guys, so we got this deer skun out and in the pot. It's important that you take the eyes out and as much meat off it as you can before you put it in the pot. This just um, this just speeds up the boiling process is really all it does. Also if you're not doing a bottom jaw, go ahead and try to take that off as well. So now we're going to cover them up, try to keep some of that heat in there. And then we're just going to wait, and I'll be back to show you how I scrape off the meat here shortly. Alright guys, we let the skull um, boil for a while, so we're going to go ahead and scrape off some of the meat. Basically with hand scraping, it's pretty much a wash, rinse, repeat type of method. So we're going to scrape off as much meat as we can, throw it back in the pot, give it a little bit of time, and then repeat this process. So. We're going to go ahead and scrape off some meat now.
Alright guys, there's a couple key things I want to go over before I finish cleaning this skull. Now I don't care what you heard or who you heard it from. The inside of this nasal cavity needs to be completely cleaned. This skull will not be cleaned until this nasal cavity is completely cleaned out. Now, there will be a lot of meat stored up in these two areas right around what they call the ear butt now the easiest way to do that there will be two holes going into the skull best way that I found is to just take a screwdriver stick it inside of there and simply break that off a lot less meat around once you do now once you open that up you can actually take your screwdriver and break break completely in to the brain cavity which will help you clean that out as well so I'm gonna get to cleaning the rest of this skull and I'll come back to you guys once it's ready for whitening alright guys we're back um, got the skull cleaned off as much as I possibly could so now we're gonna get into the whitening process um, I'm actually going to change the camera angle real quick so you guys can kind of see more of a point of view of what I got going on. So, uh, meet you back in a second. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to mix our liquid developer with our quick blue. And guys, make sure you wear gloves when you do this. This is a chemical and it will burn. And let me tell you from experience, it is not pleasant. So how much you're going to use is going to depend on how many skulls you're doing. I'm only doing one. So I'll show you about how much I use. It's not a whole lot. But I mean you can be liberal with it. Now one of these packets. I think I got it on sale. Probably I want to say it was around four bucks. That'll probably do a dozen or so skulls. You want to mix this stuff in really well. The white should turn a light blue color to let you know that it's all mixed in. Now any type of bag works, I just use your everyday grocery bag for this. Now again, you, want, you can be liberal with this stuff, so don't be scared. But what you're not going to want to do is get it anywhere on the antlers. It will stain. So be careful around those. Make sure you get some in every cavity. Alright guys, you get a general idea. I'm going to go ahead and finish this guy up, and I'll be back to you guys in a second. Alright guys, so we got our skull and whitener. Um, you're going to want to wrap the skull up after you're done. This does not need to be airtight, so don't stress out about that. 
The only thing you need to stress out about is making sure that none of your whitener product gets on these antlers. Um, if it does, it's, it's going to stain your antlers a whiter color. Simple fix for that also. Just grab any type of wood stain. I shake up the, the, bo uh, the can. I grab, um, grab a cotton swab or anything. Dab a little bit on and lightly rub wherever it's white. Eventually the color will turn to whatever color your deer antlers are or whatever antlers you're working on. Um, this whitening process that I do use, it is a two day whitening process. I do not recommend doing any longer than a two day process. Once you go longer than two days you run the risk of this it, of this product or any other chemical product that you're going to use to be bleaching, whitening skulls, is breaking down the skull itself after so long. So like I said, I recommend no longer than two days. I personally do a two day whitening unless requested otherwise by whatever customer I have. Um, this skull is pretty much done for the most part. Um, we're going to wait a couple of days and then we're going to come back clean them off and then I'll show you guys how I shine them up before we ship them out to the customer. Alright guys, so it's been two days on the whitener. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get them out of the bag. I'm going to go wash off all the whitener. I'm going to clean off the skull and I'm also going to go ahead and clean off the antlers as well. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and I'll show you guys how I shine them up before we get them out to the customer. Alright guys, so a lot of taxidermists um, that you'll take your mount to are going to use some type of heavy lacquer um, as a finish on your skulls. I mean personally I'm not a fan of the big heavy lacquer 99% of the people that I've talked to aren't either. So after years of trying many many different products the best one that I found to use is Mop and Glow. It's a floor cleaner um, it puts a nice shine on the skulls as well as the antlers and it also gives it a really nice uh, clean clean smell to it. Um, so basically all you're going to do is pour some into some type of container and you're just going to brush it on. You can be heavy with it if you want more of a lacquer finish. Again I'm not a big fan of a super heavy lacquer. Just to me it just doesn't seem natural. So I do one or two coats of this and again this is really good for getting the smell out of the skulls as well as putting a nice shine on them. And you can go ahead and you can shine up the antlers as well. And you can be liberal with this stuff as also. Make sure you put some in the brain cavity because that's more or less where most of your smell is going to come from. <clears throat> you don't have to be clean with this stuff. Just make sure you get it everywhere. The back, I don't really worry too much about because no one's really going to see it. So I'll just give the back one coat. We'll go ahead and flip them over. <coughs> And do the same thing on the other side. Again, depending on how much of a shine you want on your skull, that's how many um, coats you're going to put on it. This stuff smells so good. So that stuff doesn't take long to dry, probably five minutes or so, and that'll be ready to go. 
So I'm going to wrap this guy up. I'm going to let him dry and I'm going to put another coat on him. So I'll get back to you guys once he's all done. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Stephen Sheldon for bringing me this buck all the way from Ohio. And a huge congratulations to Curtis Bloom for harvesting this whitetail. That about wraps it up for me here, guys. If you enjoyed this video, or again, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give me a like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, guys, God bless and hunt on.